All right, a couple of announcements. Uh, and then... From inside this church, Bishop Ma Mari Emmanuel's sermons attract huge crowds. If the Lord chose this day where he's showing his divine light, who am I to say no? When parishioners filled the church Monday night for Bible study, they bore witness as their bishop was stabbed. <laughs> The alleged assailant, a 16-year-old, was pinned down by churchgoers and police. What, the people are praying you're going to come and do this? Don't, don't, don't. You're going to do this? Oh, just let go. Just go, please. You're going to make it worse. No, no, no. You're a fucking idiot. You're going to do it. The boy appears to grin as the melee unfolds. You think that hurt my brother? Very sad news, but it's extremely important that you are aware of these type of things. There is a bishop named Bishop Ma Marie Emmanuel, and he is a priest at Wakeley's Christ the Good Shepherd Church. Now, yesterday he was attacked by a man wielding a knife. Now, take a look at this eyewitness testimony of what he claims happened during the attack, and it's very, very clear what he says. Listen carefully. I grabbed him. I was the first one to grab him. You okay, turn on camera? No, no. Okay. Well, you can just tell me. Tell me what happened. Camera's not on you. He was uh, stabbing. He was stabbing. Yeah. And I saw him. I ran and grabbed him from behind and just pushed him down. Look. Oh, that's all his blood. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Motherfucker. He kept saying, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. He was saying that? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. being here. Shortly after 7 p.m. last night, police were called to a church in Wakeley in southwest Sydney in relation to reports that a male was stabbing the clergy inside that building. Police responded and arrested a young person and he was restrained inside that building. Subsequently, as it has been mentioned, at 1.35 a.m. this morning, after consideration of all the material, I declared that it was a terrorist incident. Strike Force Katrina has been established to investigate that side of the events last night and a referral has been made and agreed to by the Joint Counterterrorism Investigation Team that will work, we will work jointly with New South Wales Police lead with AFP and other Commonwealth agencies in this investigation. So that is some great news that the police force have actually acknowledged the truth for once. Despite the amount of Muslims across social media denying that he's a Muslim, we have this video evidence proving that he is. Take a look. So you heard it for yourself, he literally went and attacked Bishop Marmari because Bishop Marmari apparently insulted his false prophet. Now in a previous video I asked if anybody in the audience speaks the same language, can they confirm that the translation is accurate? And many, many people confirmed that he was in fact claiming that exact statement. Bible. Absolutely not. That Jesus in the Bible is the Son of God is God. That Jesus in the Bible was crucified and he is the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. Do you believe in this or not? Don't tell me he's a prophet. What prophet? What am I going to do with a prophet? A prophet can't help himself, let alone help me. But it's ironic how they come back and they say that Asa went up to heaven alive and will come back alive. Muhammad is dead and rotted in the grave. Yet this one went up alive and when he comes back, he will judge the living and the dead. I just want to know, who is the judge of the living and the dead? Isn't it God? Would God give his job to a prophet? So is God now unemployed? I'm asking, is God unemployed? 
Who is the judge? They'll say God. But you just told me this prophet is going to judge the living and the dead. Now the other thing is, wouldn't you want to follow someone who is living instead of someone who is dead? Looks like this guy's done much better work. And if he's going to judge the living and the dead, meaning like humanity, shouldn't I be nice to this one who's going to judge me? In the Quran, it says about the Lord Jesus, according to their book. I speak Arabic, I write Arabic, I read Arabic. I'm educated in the Arabic language. What is Muhammad is saying in the Quran? He's saying, but Jesus or Isa, Jesus, but Jesus, son of Mary, is the word of God and a spirit of God. Now, I ask Muhammad, where did you get this from? But Jesus, son of Mary, is the word of God and a spirit of him. Oh, John, the fourth living creature, which is the flying eagle, the gospel of John. John chapter one, verse one, the very beginning of the gospel. In the beginning was the word. Look at what Muhammad is saying. Jesus, son of Mary, is the word of God. Okay, don't lose track of this. He is the word of God. John, six centuries prior to him. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So what are you trying to say, Muhammad? Are you saying Jesus is God? That's what you're saying. You got it from the Gospel of John, not from Allah, from the Gospel of John. He is God. We know all the history. The moment you deny the divinity of Christ, He is not the Son of God, He is not God, and He was never crucified, you have denied your own salvation. When you deny your salvation, you've denied life. When you deny life, what are you gonna end up with? Death. That's why the one who's sitting on it is death. You're gonna get nothing but death. Islam flourished and expanded with the sword. That's why on the flag of Saudi Arabia is green with two swords crossing. That's how it went with the sword. Jesus said, my sword is my word and my word is love. You flourish through love, not by chopping heads. You flourish with love. I don't want to offend no Muslim. That's not my intention. But this is what their book literally says. So don't tell me we believe in your Jesus. You don't. My Jesus is God revealed in the flesh. He was crucified to save the whole world. This is my Jesus. There is, in here, it's non-negotiable area. We can't sit and say, let's come up with a solution. Now, this is the solution and the only solution. You better believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is God Himself. He was crucified. He was buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and He will come to judge the living and the dead, for He is God revealed in the flesh. I'll die for Him any second. I do not give one penny with all love and respect, no matter what happens, because the Christ that came and revealed himself to this piece of wreck is the only one. He is my King, my Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer forever. Christ is calling us to love him. He is not calling us to follow a set of rules, guidelines, and regulations. And let me say this to all the religions of the world. You're talking about you must fast and you must do this and you must you do your penances and whatever you have to do. Let me say this. To enter in the presence of God, who can do what God wants? Who can fulfill the fullness of the law of God? We are nowhere near that perfection to do and abide by what God does. He showed that in the Old Testament, the Israelite nations. Mm -hmm. They failed him from the word go till the very end. Yeah. But he is the never failing God, his mercy that carries us. So when those religions out there with all love and respect, they talk about laws, I'll ask them, are you fulfilling that law? Of course not. You're falling very short of that law. So don't tell me you have to do this where you are failing as a leader. Your prophet failed those laws. Your own prophet failed them. Who? Muhammad. And the, and the very reason why Muhammad failed because he's dead. Their book says that. But their book also says about my Messiah, even though the Isa in the Quran is not the Christ of the Holy Bible, totally separate people. But let me tell you one thing. Your book says that Isa, son of Mary, went up to heaven alive and he will come back to judge the dead and the living. If I ask a Muslim who judges, they will say God. Well, you're telling me this prophet will judge. So which is which? Has the prophet taken the role of God? Has God gone on vacation and he's come and take his position? No, but Isa is the living Messiah 
even their book says. I speak Arabic, I read Arabic, I'm fluent in Arabic. When they say, But Isa son of Mary, Jesus son of Mary, is the word of God. If you're claiming Isa is a prophet, then how come all the other prophets which you believe in, you believe in Moses, you believe in Isaac, you believe in all the prophets of the Old Testament. How come none of the Old Testament prophets were referred to as the word of God? How come all the prophets and every single human being on the face of this planet was born of an earthly father and an earthly mother, yet Jesus, son of Mary, was born in a virginal birth? Through a virginal birth, he has an earthly mother, but has no earthly father for his father who art in heaven. Why? This raises question marks. How come this man is different? His birth is different. His life is different. Even his end is different. He went up alive and he will come back to judge because he is different. That's the whole story. He is different, my dear friend, because he is the living God who was revealed in the flesh. He is the Logos, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the way, the truth and the life, and there is no one else. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yesterday he is, today he is, and forevermore he is. He is the never changing God who was revealed in the flesh over 2000 years ago. And he was crucified, not he was sent up to heaven. No, he was crucified. He died in the flesh on the cross and he was buried, but rose from the dead on the third day, ascended to heaven. And he's been sitting there at the right hand of the father over 2000 years ago. And he will come back again to judge the dead and the living because he's not just a prophet for he is God revealed in the flesh. This is the Jesus I talk about. That's why I fear no one. I fear nothing. And let me say this with love and humility. When you go to heaven, I can assure you I can assure you, not because I'm a Christian, not because I'm a bishop, not because I believe in Jesus Christ, but I can assure you, in heaven, you, Muhammad will not greet you. Muhammad will not greet you. Muhammad will not greet you. It, was, it will be only one who is the way, the truth, and the life. It will be Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who died for you and me. I'm inviting you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior because there is no other way. If we don't have him, we are doomed forever, for in him, Eternal life lies. Take a look at this video. There has been um, a video circulating in TikTok and I don't know where else saying that the bishop has two weeks to live. Yeah. Um, and and somebody saying uh, farewell bishop and we're really sad to see you go. Look, I was, I was extremely excited when I heard that I have two weeks to live because I don't want to stay in this world. Um, for me, it's, it's over. Uh, whether I stay or not, it doesn't matter really. Uh, I've had my share of this world and I, I pray that the Lord takes me today before tomorrow. I want to be with Him. This is not running away. This is not an escape, no. I'm saying it with confidence in the Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. And I choose you any time of the day, all day long to be with you. I don't care about the world and whatever the world gives. So I, I was extremely happy. I thank the person who did this video. Thank you so much. I didn't know that I was dying in two weeks. So, um, but I'm not sure if I will go in two weeks time. Maybe, I don't know. But as far as being sick and he has got two weeks left, uh, that's news to me. So whether it's a disappointment to some who are listening or it's a, it's a happy occasion, I'm just letting you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think I am sick and I'm dying in two weeks time, but everything is in the Lord's capable hands. But there is no such thing. I am not sick. I'm not dying. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry to say this. <laughs> Maybe some of them heard it and said, yes, finally we're getting rid of this old bishop. But sorry, guys, I'm still sitting on your heart. <laughs> Yeah, Monday yeah. night, 7 p.m. Oh, man. And uh, uh, we just had him on four months ago. Incredible message he gave. Four Assyrians, me, 
Vinny and George Enko that was on here. Play this clip. The moment he's about to stab him, stop it. Stop, stop. stop. right there. Okay. So he stabs him multiple times. Go back to the other Twitter on the a couple other clips. If you can go back to my Twitter account mm -hmm. and show the other video where Bishop Marmari is on the ground being uh, uh, attended to right uh, uh, right there. If you can make this one bigger. And this is him. He's lifting up the cross. He's bleeding. Okay. So he's moving. He's in stable condition. They end up taking him to the hospital. Okay. Now, you can stop this. Go to the other clip, Rob, of the guy, the, the guy who actually stabbed him. Look at the face of evil, bro. Yeah. If that isn't a demon, I don't know what, what it is. Rob, I'm sending the he? video to you if you can have it and show this. He was this. saying Allah Akbar. He was saying he said Allah, Allah Akbar. Akbar. Pretty sure nothing he was positive. Muslim? Is positive. Yeah, okay. So you, you see, you see. Well, we saw him smiling. Yeah, of course. Yo, you see him doing this. So, anyways, the, what's the point of this? By the way, most people don't know this. Bishop Marmari took himself and I think 55 people from his congregation to Gaza in November. Yep. So he goes to Gaza in November to go visit a Christian church in Gaza, and he tells the story of a three-year-old kid that he sees. And they stop and they talk to the kid and they gave something to the kid. And then they went on the bus. They got money. They give it to a bunch of different people. He's given this beautiful message. By the way, if you go on Twitter, uh, the video is right, right below one of the ones I posted as well, where you listen to the message of what the experience was like going to Gaza. He's given a unifying message right there. That one right there at the top. Uh, is that the one? Yeah, that's the one right there, Rob. Oh, man, it's too long. I don't want to play the whole thing. But he's given the whole testimony of what happened uh, when he went there. So, well, I, you know, I, I, I prayed for him yesterday. I prayed for him today. It's it, What an amazing guy. We, you know, just going back and reminiscing on some of the clips from the PBD podcast that he was talking about. He fears nothing. And he goes, if I get attacked, like it just, just an amazing soul. I don't get into the politics of, oh, he's in this church or that church. He's a Christian man. He's preaching the word of God. Uh, and apparently, this goes to the testament of his character. Tom, the, the guy, the young guy who was like, what, 15 years old that stabbed him? He was 16. Got, 16 years old. Correct. Marmar got up, head bleeding, put his hand on his head and prayed for the guy that stabbed him. He Once was he 16. 16 years old. Correct. Marmar got up, head bleeding, put his hand on his head and prayed for the guy that stabbed him. Think about that. And number two, look at how the Lord works. Evil is ignorant. This moron, his blade didn't open, didn't retract all the way. So if you guys see it online on your own, he goes to stab and then he looks at the knife because it didn't open. Talk about God intervening. It could have got uh, been a lot worse, but apparently they cut this guy's fingers off. That's what. That's just from Australians that were messaging me uh, saying it. It's just you know what what evil like we are at. Besides just a, a world war, guys, there's a spiritual war happening with good and bad. I know Tom wants to say well, something. I, I think this is just the, the atrocity of mankind, and it's broken men living in a broken world. And you've got people that are radicalized by a certain faith, and that faith has at its core the extinction of others. Um, and anything that is an infidel is subject to extinction. Um, that's the simple the way it is. And it's, you've got, you know, take a look at Catholics and Christians that are reaching out and trying to send missionaries into area to communicate the love of Jesus Christ and the healing power of Christ as a solution for the broken world at versus let's exterminate our any, anyone else. And this, this precious man who went into Gaza went on a mission trip there, touched the lives of people, goes back to his pulpit, and you have a radicalized youth that, that comes to him. And when I say radicalized, I also think about um, the UK researched thoroughly. Remember the subway bombings mm -hmm. in uh, the UK? Mm -hmm. And they researched it, and they, and they found, what was that? I think it was three specific radical clerics that were in uh, northern London, I believe it was, that had radicalized and incented to violence the people that planted those those bombs that were in the London London tubes and it, it that 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 is you have to go upstream to it and find out you know where is this issue and I, I'm glad that this 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 cleric 
uh, survived, <coughs> and I'm glad that he was very Christ-like. You know, when Christ was arrested before he was crucified, you can read the scripture that one of his his own um, uh, apostles, Peter, you know, drew a sword in a moment of anger and cut the ear off a Roman soldier. His name was Malchus. Christ reached up and healed the ear on the spot and said, this is not what this is about. And so I compared that and this man reaching out and, for him. and praying respect. for him I, of deep respect and being Christ-like, even as he was moments from possibly being martyred himself. That's the first time ever and the last time ever. The word hallelujah. And we said about hallelujah means praising, uh, praising Yahweh, rejoicing in the Lord. And Yahweh means the I am. And we said why John the Beloved wrote hallelujah instead of praising Yahweh. Because if he had written and the great multitude um, praised Yahweh, then it would have been they praised him because he has done something for them. That's why they praised him. You will praise, you will only praise someone when they've done a favor to you. So that's why John the Beloved, he left the word Alleluia instead of literally transliterated into praising Yahweh. He said, no, Alleluia. Why? Because to say to all of us, we rejoice in the Lord. We praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for himself, not for what he has done for me. You need, you need to love the Lord for being him. I love you for who you are, not what you've done. I don't love you because you healed me. I don't love you because you comforted me. I don't love you because you saved me. I don't love you because you got me out of the grave and out of death. I love you because you are Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I love you for you, not for what you do. And this is the true, genuine love. And we gave a brilliant example between a husband and a wife. The husband goes, on a business trip overseas and then he calls his wife after two weeks being away honey what would you like me to bring you from alberta canada and honey is in sydney australia the wife replies and says to him hun i don't want nothing from you i just want you you are my gift if if the couple live this way you'll never come to church and say to the priest i want a divorce now in chapter 19, the word Alleluia mentioned for the first time and it's mentioned four times in chapter 19. It's mentioned four times in chapter 19. Now, why four times? Let us contemplate on this for a moment. Why four times? You see, the word of God is joy for me and you and for all of us. And the word of God, the Lord gave it in the New Testament in the four gospels why four times alleluia rejoice in yahweh praise yahweh why four times because god gave his word through four gospel writers matthew mark luke and john so matthew mark luke and john it is the word of god and the word of god is joy happiness thankfulness and praising yahweh thank you for giving me you thank you for giving me you through the four gospel writers and why four gospel writers? Because there are four corners to this world, east, west, north, and south. Meaning, my word, God is saying, my word is for the four corners of the world, and I gave it through four gospel writers. And in Revelation 19, Alleluia is given four times. So, my word is for every human being without differentiation. Because God is love and God created every single human being on the basis of love. God loves everyone. He never differentiated between this nation or that nation, between this race or that race, between this color or that color. Every human being to God is his child. And that's why Alleluia is mentioned four times in Revelation 19. And the heart of the Holy Bible the center of the Holy Bible, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. God loved the entire world. That's why he gave his beloved son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for the Muslim, for the Buddhist, for the Hindus, for the atheist, for everyone.